Hello web developers, welcome to the project walkthrough for the Watts 3020 Introduction to JavaScript project, the course roster. So in this um, project, our goal is to use object-oriented programming concepts to create a class roster. Um, so we will have a, uh, uh, a course and we'll be able to uh, create students and teachers within the course, we'll be able to um, work with the student, work with the course, work with the teachers, um, and so forth. So let's go ahead and start out the way that we always do by forking this project into our personal accounts. And once this completes, we'll be able to clone this out to our local development environment. And then we're going to go into that directory and we can see all of the files that we have there. Um, I'm going to open up these files in Sublime, which is my text editor of choice. You may use whatever text editor you want. And then actually before we get looking at the files, I want to go ahead and run our Python web server so that we can uh, check out what this page is going to look like. So if we load up the page um, at the beginning without any of the JavaScript, obviously the JavaScript is not executing properly. It's uh, completely broken here because my course is not defined. But um, we can see the page layout and we can get an idea of what we're going for. So we're going to have all of the students listed out here. We're going to have the course title. We're going to have teacher information. We're going to have a course description. We have an add teacher and add student buttons. We have uh, present and absent buttons for each individual student that gets listed here. And then this attendance percentage should alter itself according to how many present and absents we give the student. So uh, this is a little model of a course roster. It's not that different from what, what we actually have in our, our LMS and everything here at the university. But um, hopefully it'll be interesting to build it and we'll get to play with a lot of these uh, ideas of object-oriented JavaScript. So let's jump into the code repository here and let's see what's in here. So the CSS file um, is just CSS file providing us with those base styles. You can enhance that if you wish. And then um, we have an index.html file uh, which provides us with an idea of what HTML is going to be created by the JavaScript. All of this, most of this gets overwritten by JavaScript. Um, and then we're going to actually have the main.js file here that gives us all of our to-dos. Um, we, we have a whole bunch of to-dos in this one. Um, and then we uh, have a, a larger main script here that handles inserting everything into the HTML and setting up all of the event listeners. Um, so all of this stuff to create the HTML, um, all of these things to create event listeners. Then we have an update roster function, which everything calls after it updates uh, the data. And we also have a set up attendance buttons function that, um, that allows us to set the event listeners on the present and absent buttons uh, in the display. So this is the, the file that we're given. We don't have to mess with any of that stuff. The goal is to write our code so that all of this stuff uh, becomes properly functional. So if we complete all of these to-dos correctly, then we will succeed with that. Um, I think for this project, this is an example kind of, of how we can uh, begin not necessarily at the top of the file and we can actually get a little bit further and, and be able to test things out a little more as we go. So if we notice, um, if we look back at our web browser here, we can see that the error that we're getting is that my course is not defined. So um, we could get our JavaScript running if we simply uh, s initialize this course class into my course. And that, that course class um, wants these three values, course, cor course code, course title, and course description. And if we scroll down here, we can see that we have this section here where we're prompting for course info. So I'm actually going to write the pr these prompts first. So I'm going to say, uh, and this this is is basically the same process that we've done in a lot of the a lot of our previous videos for this course. Um, 
so uh, it will go similarly. And I'm going to probably do a little fast forward here so that you can watch this, but uh, we'll go through it a little more quickly. So now that we've written all of those prompts, we can initialize an instance of, our, of the course class to create an object. So we want my course to be a new course which needs course code, course title, and course description that will should allow us to have at least the uh, code title and description um, added to our page properly so we should always test whenever we write any small amount of code we want we want to try to test it as soon as possible so let's go ahead and refresh this and see what we see here so we get the prompt properly so that's great I put in some default values just to help us with the testing we should remove those before we're all done and deploy to public but um, I'll go ahead and just hit enter to take these and what we can see here is that we have the code and title coming through properly and we have a great course for all and our error has actually gone away this was the old message so we didn't get that error again so I'll go ahead and clear the console so that doesn't confuse us and now we have this. We also noticed that all of our students disappeared because now the JavaScript is running and it's, it's updating this with the current data and we, we do not yet have any student. If we click add student, we see that we get an error here. So add student is not, not a function. If we click add teacher, we get the same error. Set teacher is not a function. So that is because we haven't completed the other to-dos. So let's go ahead and jump over and um, scroll back up to the top of the file and we'll start completing those things. So um, the first thing that we want here is a base class called person. And as we can read here, it takes a parameter name and email and then it's going to strip out the username from before the at symbol in the email and it's going to use that to store on this dot username property. So um, that is uh, that's cool and we can make that function, right? Um, the first thing that we do to define a class is just type in class and this one is just person and it's not extending anything. This is a base class so we're just going to call it person. Um, to create our constructor method we just label it constructor we know that we want to send in name and email here so we can go ahead and type those in and prompting for the name is pretty easy we can say this dot email equals prompt or sorry this dot name equals prompt uh, oh. excuse me this dot name equals name uh, we're not prompting at all yet. Um, so then uh, this dot email equals email. We can also say this dot username equals the email split on the at symbol. And this gives us actually an array but we know that the first item in this array is going to be the thing that is to the left of the at symbol so that's the username that we want and we can actually reference that directly here so we're shortcutting so this is a new way of referencing um, from what we've used before but it is a shortcut way of referencing that array that is created when we do email dot split so that will save the username from the left side of the at symbol into this dot username so we now have the person class taken care of and uh, we don't need to do anything else here to the person class but if we had something that we wanted to apply to all the people in our system we could add it you know a method or whatever to this class and, and that would be helpful 
Um, the next to do says that we need to create another class that extends the person and it's called student. Uh, the student class is going to add a line to the constructor method that sets the property this.attendance to an empty array. Uh, the attendance property will be used to record and track attendance. Um, it says that we're going to need to use the super command. So, so the way that we'll do this is class student extends person, sorry, not parentheses, but curly braces, and then we're going to define the constructor, and it's also, the constructor is still going to take name and email, but, uh, and we want to just run the previous constructor, so we may as well just do that right away, um, but then we also want to say this.attendance equals an empty array, and to, to do an empty array, we just do the two square, square brackets like that, and that's the empty array, so that is um, that's everything that we need uh, this to do goes inside of that of that student class so I'm just gonna paste it here for now and uh, so that we can read it more easily so it says to do create another method on the student class called calculate attendance so the idea here is that any student should be able to tell you what the attendance per uh, percentage is so any student object should have a method for that so um, to do that, we would just uh, literally create a little function name here, calculate attendance, and we don't need any information to go in there because this is just going to work with information that's on the, uh, the student object itself. So calculate attendance, and then um, we, can, we can then figure out what is the attendance. And so to do that, we could take we're going to record attendance as either a zero or a one in this list. So a zero means absent and a one means present. And so to calculate the attendance percentage, we could just calculate the average of all of those numbers. So if a person's present one day, that's a one and zero or and absent the next day, that's a zero. So that would be, um, you know, zero, zero plus one divided by two because there's two and that would give us a, a 50 percent attendance rate so that's that's basically what we want to see happen there so um, the way that we can do it is we can uh, we can do um, a counter just a simple counter and initialize it to zero and then say for uh, the uh, we'll just say mark of this dot attendance so that's that's going to take everything that's in this dot attendance so every item in that array and we're going to just say for let mark of this attendance so we're gonna that that value mark is gonna have whatever the value is for that item we're gonna say counter equals counter plus mark so if the counter was at one and then the mark is one then the counter will become two if the counter was at three and the mark is one, the, the counter will become four. So we're just adding whatever the value is of the mark to that. And then after we're done, we can say um, attendance percentage equals uh, the counter divided by this dot attendance dot length. So the length of that array is how many items we have. And the way you calculate the average is to total up all the items and then divide by the number of items. So now we, we have that as um, a decimal percentage and we can turn it into an actual percentage percentage by multiplying it by 100. So that's great. Um, so that would turn our 0 0.5 into 50, right? Um, then we can return that and you notice that this is supposed to return an actual percentage like 90% or whatever right so we can say return and we're going to use a template literal here attendance percentage and then just the percent sign so that we actually return it with the percent sign properly the way that it wants so that is that is how we can calculate the attendance.
Now, people who are astute might notice that that leaves us open on the first time around. If there's no items in this list, then the percentage is going to give an error. It's going to give a not a number error in JavaScript. So we can correct for that situation by wrapping this entire set of lines in a conditional. So we can say if this dot attendance dot length is greater than zero, because remember the problem is that if we divide by zero and here we're dividing by a, this dot attendance dot length. So we'll say if it's greater than zero, then let's do all of this stuff. Otherwise, or else, <laughs> um, let's just return 0% because there's no attendance percentage at all. So we know that if, if the length is not greater than 0 here on the number of times that somebody's marked this person present or absent, then there's no need to calculate it. We just know that that's 0. So now we have a, our, our calculated attendance method nice and protected, and we can... Um, we can work with that. We can, it might seem a little bit awkward because it's difficult to test this and we don't yet have a way to add a student and we haven't um, hooked up a bunch of the other stuff, but the way that we can test it is actually um, pretty easy. We can say, um, we can actually initialize um, the student object uh, itself, just saying test student equals new student and uh, the student needs a name, so we'll just say Jane, and an email, so we'll say Jane at example.com, and that's all the student needs. So now if we look at test student, we have this object here, which we can see has attendance, and it's an array with link zero. We also have email name, and we have, we have the name is Jane, and then her username is Jane, because that's, that's what is to the left of the at sign in the email. So this has all come together the way that we want. And if we run test student calculate attendance, we should be able to see what is the attendance for this person. And right now we see that it returns 0% because we have an array that has length 0. So it's, it's going to execute the else clause in that. But if we said uh, uh, test student dot attendance dot push, and if we pushed a one on to say that this person showed up to the first day of class, for example, we could run calculate attendance again, and we see that, oh, now the attendance has gone up to 100%. And if we do the same thing where we record that maybe the person didn't show up the next day, then, and we run calculate attendance, now we see 50%. So we know that our code is correct, and that's a way that we can test using this console. And this is super valuable when you're developing JavaScript. It's something that you really want to get a ha get into the habit of doing is and it's also why it's nice to do classes and um, and why people like object oriented programming because I can sort of fairly discreetly test out the individual functionality I didn't need to make an entire course I didn't need to make um, you know add a student to the course or anything like that I could just create a student object because I now have that student class defined and then I can test out the features of that student object so that's um, that's how we uh, uh, that's how we work with that. Um, let's let's continue on to the next to do. So the next thing is to create a teacher class. So that extends the person class, and that is also going to have a constructor method that is going to take name and email. And so we need to do the same super thing that we did before. But then we also need to set up this dot honorific. So in fact, we need to add a third thing to the constructor, which is the honorific. Um, and so that's like, is the teacher, you know, doctor, professor, Mr. Miss, whatever. Um, so that's, uh, that's, that's what we're adding there. So that's that class is very simple and lean. Uh, we use the super again to pull in all the functionality of the person constructor, but then also add that line um, to add in that value that we that we collected as an extra parameter. So um, we could save that, and we could similarly 
um, refresh our code here, and we could we could say test teacher equals new teacher, and that needed a name, an email, and an honorific. So there we go. That that worked. I've got a teacher object that came back from that, and I can see that everything's gone into the right spots, and I have all of all of my data there. So once again, testing in the console super helpful. Um, let's go back to our code and set up some of these things that we need to start adding people. So uh, we get into the the way that the course class is defined here, and we can see some of the stuff that's in the course class. We have a teacher, um, which is set to a null object, and students is set to an empty array. So we can add the add student method. Um, so that would that would mean uh, just typing that in there. And the thing about add student is that it's going to need to actually prompt for information. Okay. So we're going to need to say um, the. Uh, the first thing that we're going to need to say is like let name equal uh, prompt students oh, full name and then we can say let email equal prompt student email. I think I used colons before so I should put a colon up here too. So so we have these prompts and we can now initialize a new student by saying let new student and it's the same way that we created it in the console equals new student object and that is going to be name and email that's all that it takes to create a student object and then we're going to add this to our students list our students array so we're going to say this dot students dot push new student and that object is just going to go into that array that array is a list of objects you know um, it's an array of, of objects so so we're going to push the new student in there. And then you notice here that it says you'll need to, to reference the class. It says that we'll need to um, update the roster display by calling update roster. And it says that we're going to need to reference the class instance um, in update roster because it needs a, an actually a, a course instance um, in order to update. So we're going to say update roster this. And that should allow us to add a student. So let's save that and see if that actually does allow us to add a student. So here we are. We can refresh our code. We'll zip through these to create our test course. And we're going to click Add Student. And lo and behold, our prompt comes up. Student full name, Jane Doe. Student email, jdo at example.com. And there we go. So now we have successfully done this. We didn't get any errors over here. Uh, we see our, our, our data properly showed up here. Our attendance is, is displaying what it's supposed to display. So we have present and absent buttons, and those are not really doing anything yet. Um, if we click them, we get an error because we, we haven't yet written the mark attendance function. All right, so let's continue our work. So next is the set teacher method on the course. So um, each course has one teacher and this needs to um, gather the name, the email, and the honorific. So we're going to set up those prompts.
And so once we've collected all of that, then we can say um, that we have a new teacher. And um, we actually don't even need to, we could actually just directly assign this to this dot teacher. And we can say new teacher with name, email, and honorific. And that will just attach it there. So once we finish this, obviously we need to update our display so that we can see the information changing. So we'll run the update roster command again. And there we go. So now if we refresh our page, we'll zip through this course creation. And we should be able to click add teacher and have that work properly. Let's see if it does. All right, teacher full name. Uh-huh, and there we go. So we see now that it has updated the teacher record on this course properly. So we are moving right along and getting getting really close to being done here. So the next thing is one of the most complicated parts of this, which is the mark attendance method for the course. So this is what's going to actually handle marking um, you know, students present or absent. So we're going to create the mark attendance. It's going to take in a parameter called username. That's going to be sent in by the event listener. That's already set up. Um, we um, need to retrieve the student object and it says that we can use the, the find student method that already exists. So if we look down here, this is the find student method that it's referring to, and that already exists on the course um, class object. We've, we've been provided with that for us. Uh, it uses the uh, find ability of an array, which is a nice thing to know about. So feel free to study that a little bit if you're curious. But we can just use that function. So again, this is a, a benefit of abstraction and object-oriented programming. We don't have to know exactly what happens inside of find student. We know that if we give it a username, it will give us back a student object. And then on that student object, we can uh, then um, use the, the appropriate method on the student object to actually record the attendance. Okay, so that sort of implies, well, we, it implies one of two things, right? Um, we, could, uh, we could directly affect the student object or we could, we could write a method on the student object to say mark present and mark absent. That's probably the more elegant way of doing it. So let's start out here by creating this mark attendance function. So go here, or method, sorry. Uh, so we're gonna mark attendance and we're gonna, that is going to expect to receive a username. And so the first step is going to be to get the student. Um, so we're going to say uh, let uh, student equals this dot find student username. And so that gives us the student record there. And then we're going to um, uh, actually mark the attendance. But the problem right now is that we don't actually know which way to mark the attendance. And it says the default behavior should be to mark the student present. The alternate behavior should be to mark the student absent. And if we scroll down here and we actually look at, well, where does this actually get called? You'll notice that it gets called right here in two spots. So here it gets called mark attendance and they're just sending in the username. And then here it gets called mark attendance and it also has this little key that says absent. So I think that's what we need to um, model and our mark attendance up here. So we probably need to say that um, we have like a st attendance status and we're gonna default that to be present. So here we can write a little, um, a little conditional where we can say if status is present then student dot attendance dot push one because that's that's how we mark them present remember we were experimenting with that in the console else student dot attendance dot push 
too. And we don't actually have to check explicitly for, for absent. We could check explicitly for absent. We also could add a method to the student object itself that would be mark present or mark absent. And then we wouldn't have to remember any of these correlations. Um, like I just forgot that two is not absent, zero is absent. So, so we need to make sure that we do those correctly. This is violating a little bit of a separation of concerns. It would be nice if we, um, if we made like a mark present or mark absent on the student object itself. Um, but let's just verify that this actually uh, works. Um, obviously, once we mark attendance, we also want to update the roster again. So we're going to need another one of those update roster calls. Let's just see how this works um, given everything. So we're going to have to refresh. We're going to create the course again. We're going to add a student. Uh, I'm going to go through this very quickly. We now have a present and absent buttons that hopefully work. Let's see what happens. Present worked. Press present again. We see the message over here, but we, if we say absence, okay, we've got that good. Okay, we could clean up some of that number presentation if we wanted to, so that maybe we don't need quite such long uh, decimal points. Um, but we are we are doing pretty well. Uh, calculating present and absent. So we could uh, continue pushing this, you know. Uh, we could uh, move this over to be a student.mark absent, student.mark present. Um, we could do that. Uh, there's a lot of nice things that we could do with this. We could add the ability to remove a student or remove a teacher. Um, there's all kinds of ways to uh, stretch this, this, uh, this project. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, we could also provide the ability to edit the course information, right? Um, so anyways, uh, feel free to work towards any of those ideas that you have for, for stretching this forward. Uh, for now, um, we've basically completed the entire project. We could just commit this and push it up to our GitHub pages, and we would be all good to go. So hopefully this was a fun project to work on, and you got a little bit of a better understanding of how different classes could work and how you could use different methods and how you could create code that is sort of interdependent but also kind of independent. Hopefully you learned a little bit about using the console to test your code and otherwise had a good time building this awesome little roster. So take care, uh, have a blast working on this, and I look forward to seeing your websites up online. Bye.